Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Hi, you're a, a you know, um, I'm a, a, you, you're like, a, like watching, uh, I mean, I'm watching. Oh yeah, I'm listening. No, no, you're listening to, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, Oh, oh, talk your generation, you know? No, we don't know. What's Reesh? What's Bank? Well, you know who to thank. It's Ellen and the boys. So let's all make some noise. The acting never gets old. It rocks me to my gut hole. Welcome to show 909. Hi, hello everyone. I am Alan. I am Matt. And I am Paul. Uh, Okay, so hopefully, like the last continuation (laughs) show for at least a couple, at least a month. Um, So, so yeah, so this is sort of the final of the group. Um, I think we, we went way farther than we probably should, but nevertheless, uh, we are going to skip sort of what's free, what's hot, and anything that I would have to update on is really house-related stuff, which is probably really boring to people. So I don't want to plague you with any of that, so we're just going to jump right in. We have six things remaining. Um, these are continuations. All of them are continuations full length. So let's just start up uh, front with that. That being said, uh, what's the first one on our list? Okay. Uh, the first thing on our list is... Tick, 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 tick. Kantai Collection or Kan Kole. And this is the long-running series about girls with the spirits of battleships sort of fighting World War II naval battles. Do I have that right? Uh, Yes, that isn't actually that long running. It's been around for a while, uh, but we haven't seen any since 2015. But I think there are an awful lot of games in the series, though I haven't played the game, so I cannot state that for certain. Oh, yeah, there's a a whole bunch of them. Uh, Yeah, this is in the girls are military hardware genre. And yes, in this mm-hmm. case, the military hardware is ships. Uh, other entries in this series are things like Strike Witches, where the girls are planes and do not wear any pants. And uh, 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 Girls with Panzer. What, what was the uh, Girls with Panzer? Uh, what was the one where there was OS Tans or something like that? Oh, well, so yes. And then there's the uh, broader... Um, Personification uh, so probably, genre. Yeah anthropomorphic personification so you're probably thinking of neptunia collection which is if i recall more or less the uh girls in the show are anthropomorphic personifications of uh game consoles well the the point of bringing it up (laughs) was that it, it fell within this sort of genre type um except that military hardware is just sort of the specificity of it so well, I mean, you could go to something like Aki Khan from uh, when was that? That was uh, like tw- 2007, 2008, somewhere in there, where the uh, girls are empty soda cans. <laughs> <laughs> Which I personally feel is sort of a, a peak of, of high concept anthropomorphizations. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I can already tell you that you know what to expect with this show. Uh, this is what the second, third season or something like that. Um, again, only the second, it uh, seems like it's been around forever. Only the second. Yeah. But there have been, there's been a movie, um, like some other stuff. It's, uh, it wasn't, I don't even remember the first season. Um, but I would, I would definitely say it's not good. Uh, so no, this is, this is a very straight plotting show where, there are girls 
they are battleships. You know this because they say which battleships they are. They also, in this show, wear like smokestacks on their back and antennae uh, to indicate, you know, a sort of a hint of which ship they are supposed to be. And they gift each other toy planes, which they are able to equip, uh, which I do not at all recall from the first season, not that I watched the whole thing, I don't think. Uh, but this seemed actually far worse than season one. It seemed far... <laughs> far further up its own ass. I mean, it is taking itself so fucking seriously. There is sad music. All the girls are talking in these deeply serious tones about the conflict they're about to engage in. And yes, you need to protect my sister and so on. And it is just excruciating. Um, you know, if I, I mean, I think it would be far preferable to collect figures of this series because then you would not have to listen to them. Yeah, um, I'm not too sure about the historical antecedents for this show because honestly, um, Japanese naval strategy during World War II is not exactly one of my primary interests. So they they talk with great seriousness about how our our central characters are um, disturbed to find out they've all been assigned to a diversionary squadron. So the idea is they're going to charge straight up some straight or another and draw the enemy's attention while the main fleet um, attacks the, the enemy ground forces, which in this case are not the Americans, but some sort of alien creatures called abyssals, but that's pretty much what they're supposed to be. Um, and they're just so gosh darn sincere about, you know, doing their duty and the glory of naval co naval combat and their interpersonal relationships. And uh, it's, it's just very weird. My one thought watching the show was, well, this is like a sailor suited girls fighting show where they actually do have some legitimate justification for being girls in sailor suits because they are actually, you know, the sailor suits are naval uniforms. So uh, but they do actually not fight, right? They just talk about it, which is, I have to say, you know, a bit of a. Uh, uh, I, I, but that's part of the genre, right? The the the, the uh, it's these these girls and they're like cute and wearing uniforms. And they have to go off to battle. And the interesting thing isn't watching them fight. It's just this sort of idea of it. It's like a, a variant of moe, I think, in a way. Mm. Uh, except it's it's like. Um, where you they know, are like re resolute and serious and going out to do the the heroic thing no yeah, matter what the cost yeah it's the juxtaposition juxtaposition of the the uh, military fantasy with the cute girl fantasy that i think is the essence of this show and mm. this one brings absolutely nothing else to the table though um I have to say that I am thinking of the Beatles, um, lovely Rita, you know, <laughs> lovely Rita meter maid. Yes. With the, the lyric, uh, you know, where, where the uh, singer comments that it, that the, her uniform makes her look a bit like a military man. So, mm. so this is, uh, not a, not a unique concept, but, uh, man yeah no, i got nothing else here <laughs> um but i do have a link for you oglink.com slash six h3 yeah do they actually like get into naval battles later in the series is this just sort of like episode one of the new season so they're just like re-establishing premise and setting up the current plot line is is that what this is oh yeah they're about? going to fight but it's going to be these you know utterly meaningless cgi fights against whatever the abyssals are i can't recall i i mean like like in strike witches they're these big cgi blobs the girls fight against and they're, that's not really the point right it's just an excuse to draw action scenes but they're eh, that's all there is to it right yeah i thought uh, the I, uh the abyssals they they showed in like the the teaser for this episode kind of looked like refugees from pepper land in uh, sergeant pepper's lonely hearts club band well there you go i guess that may maybe we're we're teasing out the true inspiration here yeah. maybe all right so what do we have next on the list all right next up on our list is mob psycho 100 the show about an exorcist agency 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been about three years since we've had an entry in uh, in the Mob Psycho show. Uh, this is season three. And and yeah, this is a show about a, a young boy who is just has these ludicrously strong psychic powers. Mm -hmm. um, and he's sort of confused and he ends up wandering into uh, in the first season an exorcism agency run by a person who is an obvious charlatan yeah he uh, uh he has no talent and no skill with exercising spirits so it is incredibly lucky for him that this young boy mob just sort of wanders into his orbit and joins up with him yeah, and so that's more or less the structure of this show as as they encounter actual psychic uh, disturbances and weird situations and and uh, and uh, Bob, Bob, Bob tries to achieve his happy ordinary life, which is forever outside his reach. And he does things like you know joining the uh, the body improvement club at his school and defeating a cult and. Lots, of course, of exorcisms. It seems like I, yeah. I thought I'd watch season two, but I don't. Uh, this one dropped into a storyline that I didn't recall. So I think I did not actually finish season two when it was airing. Yeah. But it's it's basically, I guess, third season, same as, as ever. Yep, very much so. The premise is, is unchanged. Yeah, we got another character who's a super powerful exorcist. Mob is sort of like a general psychic. Um, and the 100 is sort of, it's, as the show goes on, there'll be these like little um, uh, overlays on the screen showing what percent he's at. And when he hits uh, 100%, like all of the psychic energy that's been an anger that he's been <laughs> just kind of boils up and wreaks destruction upon the city, uh, which nobody quite gets, including Mob. So, I mean, it's it's it. This is is basically a comedy. Um, it's got a very uh, sort of sketchy drawing style to the art that works, I think, pretty well. Um, yeah, I mean, I I, I enjoy this show. Um, I, I probably will watch some more of it. Yeah. Um, let's see. What is this? Season three starts out with um, Mob undergoing sort of a, a crisis of of self-identity because it is career survey time at the middle school and he he has no idea what to put down on his like his survey for future employment he's in middle school he's he's trying to figure out what his life is like now let alone what he's going to be doing when he's an adult mm -hmm. And I, I just get the feeling that the way they talk about this that this is not just a survey this is the sort of thing like in Brave New World where it's Japan. So whatever you put down in your career survey is going to have like this huge um, influence on the course of your future life. Well, it, it actually, and that's sort of the interesting undercutting that this first episode does, because that's, you know, how Mob is treating it. And like at the end, and not to, this is not a major spoiler, his counselor is like, Oh yeah, you know this. It, you know it's fine. You know you're in middle school. You don't need to know. But you know you should really, if you don't come up with something eventually, um, you know it's going to be harder to find your way in life. And mm -hmm. Mob's like, whoa. And the teacher goes on to say, here's what I had a dream of doing. And Mob's like, oh yeah, I could do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so the teacher's like, oh, man, the thing that really worries me, kid, is like you are easily led. <laughs> <laughs> So no, it's it's good. I mean, um, this first episode wasn't the strongest. I'd say it had two very sort of separate sections. The second one definitely didn't uh, sort of click as well as the first. But you know, I'm it's it's good. I mean, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if this is like a brand new thing for season three, but um, the the le the boss of the psychic exorcism agency has actually got a new employee, mm. and once again, he is actually like psychically skilled and talented, like, and the owner is, of course, a total charlatan. So at least he's got Mob and this other guy working for him now. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm actually looking back and I don't see. Oh, no, no maybe, maybe he's in the other one. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'd have to look back to see if he's in the end of uh, season two or not. Uh, but yes, and uh, he is his he's sort of the foil to to mobs concerns because he's 30. And he's like, I have wasted my entire life. Oh, oh. My God. so. So he's uh, everyone is under a heck of a lot of stress in this show, except Reagan, you know, who's doing great. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, like he, he enjoys being a, 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 a sleazy uh, psychic con artist. He's like, yeah, you know, this is <laughs> I, I was just going to do this for a bit. But this is this is, this is the life, man. This has turned out to be a cushy gig here, man. <laughs> so, uh, so, so Reagan does, in fact, turn out to be a, a uh, sort of role model for for mob in amusing in amusing and actually uh productive ways so (laughs) um (laughs) if you're interested in watching season three oglink.com slash six h4 over on crunchyroll all right um our third show is pardon me for for my mispronunciation of this popute pp cuckoo uh it it it, uh it translates as about as good as the show is which is not uh, great. <laughs> pop team epic. So okay. we'll be using the English title for this show. <laughs> um, this is based on a four coma. It's it's just basically gag after gag after gag. And the weird thing about episode one is it's a half hour show of just like these two middle school girls with like really ugly character designs, making jokes and, and busting on each other. And then they get to the halfway point and they restart the episode with two guys doing the, the, the character voices Uh, and it's the exact same show twice, but with these two guys doing part two. And that is apparently a thing they do. And they did this in the first season. I cannot fucking tolerate it so and i mean i watched the first half i've watched an episode of this show so this is now in the entire run of the time that we have been doing uh season impressions the second time i have refused to finish an episode i was watching (laughs) yeah because i i watched it and and first of all for an animated show it starts out with this live action skit where where you've got like two guys who are like throwing down on each other anime style with like trash talking each other prior to a you know highly animated duel which they never get to but i was just like am i watching the 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 right program here Mm -hmm. uh well but you see that's its whole thing this show is just utterly entranced with itself for coming up with the idea that the funniest thing ever is not being funny. That is the single concept behind this show. And in fact, in this episode, they they lampshade that and actually say, oh no, this wouldn't be Pop Team Epic if it were funny. Uh-huh. And it just goes on and on. I know some people absolutely love this shit. Uh, and it's, it's basically a troll show, right? It's trolling the viewership. Mm. It's trolling you. It is deliberately wasting your time. It's deliberately being as obnoxious and annoying as possible you know there's a lot of references it's deliberately doing humor that isn't funny and like that's the kind of thing it has to exactly click with your sense of humor it does not Mm. click with mine i fucking hate this show so fucking bad i (laughs) rarely i rarely dread watching a show i had to really gird my loins for this one Mm. and even so um you know i'd rather watch fucking uh very forest five or whatever it is wow then then because at least that show was only bad like on the basic level like it 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 was just utter incompetence uh it wasn't just like ha ha i'm incompetent isn't that funny so yeah yeah um not a good show Uh, hard to watch (laughs) i loathe it i loathe it uh i will agree with that uh oglink.com slash six h five if you choose to waste your time on it it's on crunchyroll uh, and okay and i i do have to say a lot of people 
like this show. Like if you are mm. deeply enmeshed in anime, you know, I, you, you very well might like this. Try an episode and you will very quickly know if it's something that you can tolerate or not. And maybe you'll love it. Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of like goofy parody multi-genre stuff like um, Excel Saga. And on that level, I, I can sort of like structurally appreciate what they're trying to do but i don't i have to say the jokes did not land with me um so i'd much rather just go back and watch excel saga some more well, or because Azu. excel saga is is fucking hilarious right yeah and, and i i wouldn't say that azumanga daio is like any sort of comparison here that is a much more that that's a much that's much more, more grounded in reality yeah, but, show. but my point is that it's an alternative to watching uh pop epic mm. team whatever the hell they're yeah, so yeah. Weird. yeah pop team epic so yeah but matt's matt's uh you know call out of, of excel's interesting because it's super referential it is all over the place and in fact the last episode of it is a total troll <laughs> Uh, but but you know it has um, there's a, a hell of a lot going on with uh, Excel other than just we're just going to figure out how to be as obnoxious as possible and hope you love it. True, true. All right. Well, that was well that was really horrible. Let's go on to our next show, which is Spy Cross Product Family, which is actually really good. Mm -hmm. uh, the highlight, I would say, for me in this group and this is obviously season two mm -hmm. yep uh, nice to see it returning uh you do not actually speak the name of the cross product it is it is as is often the case silent it's just spy family oh okay um but nevertheless aside from its like clever typography um we pick up with episode 13 which is what the the start of the second core of this i guess uh, yeah, it, it, I, I'm not sure if it's technically a second season or not. It, it might be like a, a split season that where there's two core that are. I think uh, I saw by, it's a, uh, it definitely had core in it. I thought it said first core when I was looking up the title. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so it was um, they, they, it was broadcast originally, or the first part was broadcast in spring. Uh, it was not uh, showing in summer, and now it's back. Okay, um, so if you're not familiar with Spy Family, uh, the basic premise of this is that in sort of uh, fictionalized Europe, you have these two countries called Westalis and Ostania, and they're, the top spy in Westalis is this guy named Twilight, and he has been tasked with um, cozying up to a reclusive Ostania ultra-nationalist politician and the only way that he can do that is by enrolling his child at the very, very exclusive private school where uh, this guy, Donovan Desmond, sends his child. The problem is, as a spy, he is a bachelor. He has no wife. He has no child. And he certainly has nothing like the social pedigree required to go to a, an extremely exclusive Austania private school. So the first part of the season is him acquiring a wife whom he does not realize is an assassin and getting a daughter whom he does not realize is a telepath. Comedy ensues. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they, they have, they wind up here at, at episode 13, starting the, the, tail end of the season having surmounted numerous obstacles uh to to affecting the mission but he has succeeded in forming a family getting the girl enrolled in this school and getting her to excel at a top level school and in point of fact even encountering the child of this obnoxious politician uh who just like his father is an obnoxious jerk. But the mission is proceeding. And we find ourselves at the beginning of episode 13, where the daughter has surmounted uh, an academic obstacle. She has, she has like earned you know, rank at her school or something. And as a way of keeping the mission on track, Twilight and mock wife, your 
are going out to the pet shops to buy little Anya a dog because it's her heart's desire to have a dog. And since this is a spy drama, not surprisingly, political unrest and an assassination plot comes up and the rest of the the, the episode is sort of the family getting enmeshed in that. Yes, very much so. Um, so this is, you know, um, so, so a lot of the humor in the show is that the characters theoretically, none of them know each other's secrets, mm-hmm. uh, aside from Anya, right? Anya is a telepath. And so she's the one who actually knows her father's a spy and her her fake father's a spy and her fake mother is an assassin and is, you know, desperately like trying to keep up appearances. But she is like also what, nine or something like that. I don't even think she's that old. She she reads to me like maybe six or seven or yeah, something. Yeah, I think that's probably right. So she's a she's a real kid. And so she also has like a short attention span and you know loves she's a small spy. child. Come she's, on. Yeah, she 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 loves her favorite spy show on TV. So sometimes she thinks this stuff is great uh, until it gets a little too real, in which case it's completely terrifying. Yes. Uh, and so overall, this show is definitely comedy, and it's strongest when it sticks to the comedy and uses the sort of intrigue as a backdrop. Um, but there have been a, there were a couple times in the first core where it got a little too real, where the joke was yours brother, for example, mm. is actually a super sadistic uh, torturer for the secret police, with, and we get to see him torture somebody. Hilarious, yeah. and it kind of wrecks the mood a little bit. Yeah, uh, which is which is always the the real. Um, challenge when you're doing a spy show is that if you play it totally straight, spy stuff gets really, really grim, really, really fast because it's it's all about tension and subterfuge and fear of discovery and then running around and doing horrible things. And this show wa- really wants to be uh, sort of an action comedy. And they they really tread a fine line between having enough spy stuff that it seems real and has stakes and there is actual dramatic tension with it, but without um, taking it all the way to the wall and um, you know just shoving people in front of subway trains for you know purposes of maintaining state security. And, and like in this episode, for example, you, you, that helps to like establish that there's going to be stakes, right? So when Anya is discovered uh, by mm. the terrorists having you know followed a cute dog there, uh, they're like, oh, damn, she heard us. Well, I guess we need to kill the kid. And like one of them pulls out a knife, right? Ah! So they're actually like just going to like, well, you know, one of them's like, you know, it's just a kid. He's like, oh, come on, you wimp. So, so, and, and that works fairly well. I, on the whole, I'd say this this series does a great job maintaining its tone. Um, I I hope it can keep it up, right? Uh, um, yeah, I'm ready for more. It's a great series. Yeah, um, this this is a show that that I actually like really really enjoyed watching, and I I was kind of disappointed when it ended it's just like oh i have to watch some other show now i I wanted to watch more spy family well whatever you watch next is as uh in the list is not as good um (laughs) if uh the the new character though is a a a dog with precognition who is clearly going to become a major character in this season Um, but if you want more on spy family uh check out uh, show number 890 where we talked about uh, the first core in detail. Yeah, uh, earlier this year, I guess. Yeah, it would have been. Um, OGLink.com slash 6H6. It's on Crunchyroll. All right. Our next title is Marimashita Iruma-kun, Season 3, uh, Enrolled Demon Iruma, or in the English, Welcome to Demon School, Iruma-kun. And this is a fantasy comedy supernatural kind of show it uh it's not even more appealing on a, another season 
Um, yeah, if you're not familiar with this, the basic premise of the show is that Iruma is a human child who somehow winds up in the netherworld. Um, I think the, the typical comedy trope of his deadbeat gambler parents uh, basically sold him into a, a life of terrifying jeopardy to, a, to obviate their, their debts somehow. And instead of being eaten by the demons, uh, he has been adopted by like the, the grand poobah demon and sent off to demon school by his doting quote unquote grandfather. So Iruma has to survive at demon school and maintain his cover as an actual human being to prevent him from being eaten by the horrible demons who go to the school with him. Which every wedding they sing the school anthem, you know, about how delicious people are and, you know, eating them is the best. Yo-ho. Um, so anyway, to start off season, season three, um, some consequences from season two are making themselves felt where because they defeated a giant beast at an amusement park in the previous season, they are now famous and well appreciated uh, at their high school at, at demon school. Um, so Iruma is uh, having a hard time maintaining a low profile now that he is um, famous and everybody wants to be around all the people who, who like, saved the abuse the demon amusement park um and then when he shows up in class he discovers that because they are a misfit class the school has given given them the goal that they have to uh reach this thing called dalet rank which is basically the highest rank of of like graduating students um by the end of their first year, or they're all going to be expelled or eaten or destroyed or something. I forget exactly what. Yeah, they're, they're getting so it, at, in season two, they passed some challenges to enter the, I forget what the room's called, but it's like the room that the, the, the old demon king used to study. And it's mm -hmm. been, you know, ages since there's been an actual demon king. And the room has been sealed off ever since. So the misfit cl class ends up seizing this room. And the uh, the uh, Snape equivalent teacher is like, oh, these these brats, you know, we need to get them out of here. So he's just going to make their lives utter hell and uh, sets these, you know, unreasonable, um, these unreasonable challenges that they have to overcome in order to remain. Quite, quite. Um, so now they've been given this impossible task. Um, they're at least going to get tutorage. They're, they're going to have tutors in the form of experienced demons who are going to take a pair of the students of misfit class and train them and give them special training in some specialty or another that presumably they have aptitude for, such as uh, fighting or summoning or sexiness. Um, mm. And so Iruma's tutor is this guy named Robin who is basically useless his his tutelage can consists of uh telling them to be really enthusiastic and practicing yelling really loud uh and then because that's the extent of of his knowledge he sort of asks a relative of his a female demon to help him tutor these two guys and she's not really enthusiastic about it. So her tutelage consists of ordering the guys around, sending them out to buy her snacks, carry her around on a, on a litter. And then yeah. eventually she gets bored. So she dresses them up as cute girl maids. And that's basically, you know, the, the level of conflict of this show. Right. Um, yeah. So this, so I actually, in a lot of ways really like this show this this episode was definitely not its its strongest incarnation mm. uh, we talked about i don't remember which season and whether it was just one or one and two back uh back in 2020 oh, shows a while ago yeah two. and so this show's aimed fairly young right so the um uh 
level of conflict, as you say, isn't extreme. They ramp it up at a few a few places. Uh, but the thing is, they, they do a good job of sort of subverting expectations a lot of the time. Hmm. Uh, so the challenges that get thrown at Iruma and his classmates end up not being exactly what you expect. And the way Iruma comes at them also ends up being not what you expect. And that's why this stays interesting. Uh, on the other hand, uh, at, at this point, the, it, some of sort of the ticks of the creators are becoming obvious. So the only role a female character can have is she has to be sexy. And so if they get special training, they get to go to sexy class. And that is basically the extent of it there. Mm hmm. And yeah, and the character designs are sort of showing some of their limits in this one. Uh, a lot of the sort of the teacher characters, their part of their design is like a weird expression that never changes on their face, which is is fine in a manga, but not so great in, in an animated uh, in an animated show. Ah, uh, I see. I hadn't really thought about that, but yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You do have to have motion in an animation that's that's the whole thing that mm. distinguishes the the genres is that you get motion with animation and to to fail to exploit that is is really a sin yeah so so i mean for for me this series has probably kind of worn out its welcome you know i enjoyed it i just wish that they'd managed to realize a bit more of the potential um but it's definitely showing its limits uh oglink.com slash six h seven if you're interested in watching that it's also available on crunchyroll all right so here we go number six of six yawamushi pedal new generation limit break hmm. um literal title of yawamushi pedal is weakling pedal hmm. so we're going to call it yawamushi pedal yeah uh, yes which is in fact the license name yeah. Um, so the basic setting of this is um, boys sports, contemporary Japan, bicycling. And uh, that that's about it. Um, we, we open season, what is it, five? Wow. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's up there. We haven't had a, an entry in this show in like over four years, which is one of the reasons we're talking about it now since it's been a while. Okay. But uh, we open up on the first episode of season five with it being the third and final day of the inter high school bicycle race where teams from all of the best bicycling schools compete in this gigantic tournament for supremacy and self-actualization. Oh, the spirits of our young bicyclists are honed and ready. They're up, they're optimistic. They all have their idiosyncratic personality quirks and they all have their different weaknesses and strengths in the sporting arena of bicycling. And they're all here to win it or fail trying. So I, I really liked the first season of Yoamushi Pedal, which is like what a, a decade back now. It's like 2010 or, or 2012, 2013, somewhere in there. And it's uh it, it's very much about uh the main character, uh, Sakamichi Anoda's uh discovery of cycling, right? Mm. He rides his bicycle around the city and he doesn't have like a, a racing bike or anything he just has this like this heavy mommy bike right it's just like yeah. but he rides it everywhere and he like it just has this massive endurance from doing this so it's one of these things where he's uniquely suited for a particular type of cycling uh, and uh, so he joins, ends up joining up with the school cycling club, and he starts to to learn about it, to get excited about it, and discover the thrill of competition, and other people, you know, get their lives transformed because they have competed with the shonen protagonist and lost, and, you know, all the all the standards for the tropes you get in your sports anime. But as this show sort of moves into the competition, it grinds to this utterly glacial pace uh i i think i mean it takes i think it took like an entire season to do one day of the of the, the racing competition and it is just not feasible for me to watch that a week at a time <laughs> i might be able that, to binge it but I, man 
I think they're counting on you being in super enthusiastic about bicycling. Uh, well, you know, and again, it's it's one of these things where it's all about just maintaining this a constant level of shouty tension, right? Because everybody is so excited. Oh my God, I love bike riding so much. And and for, as, a, as a sports show goes, and we've talked about sports shows a lot, you don't actually have to like the sport in question to enjoy it. You have to enjoy the characters and the competition. And it's it's like you, the, the, the actual sport they're doing is a spice. As long as you don't dislike it, uh, <laughs> it, it, it should be providing just like all these constant little tidbits, you know, where they the creators can drop in some random detail about whatever sport it is. And like, this is this person's specialty that they can take advantage of. And it's probably totally unrealistic in terms of real life but it like has like this this reality flavor to it <laughs> and and that's what what drives a show like this forward but it's also there needs to be an ebb and flow and when the pace slows down this much in a show like this they have to keep the tension just ramped all the way up to the red line and it ends up just kind of burning out you as a viewer as it goes on yeah um, if you're interested, for whatever reason, based on Paul's description, oglink.com slash 6H8. Um, also on Crunchyroll. I think they're all on Crunchyroll this week. Yeah, uh, we're, we're getting up uh, probably well over 100 episodes of this thing at this point. I am not current on it. I am not going to be current on it. I mean, I enjoyed what I watched, but I think I probably watched enough. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. I don't even remember the um, previous season. Uh, first season. I don't even remember the first season, so I don't even yeah. know what season this is at. I think two, maybe three. Uh, I don't even know anymore. It's it's like uh, the, the resources I found said this is sort of like the fifth show of this because there's been lots and lots of like yeah that, that might make sense because I do this. do recall seeing one one listing with many many seasons and it. You might be right yeah. about that, Matt. Yep. It's like this it, is it, new it, generation limit break. Right. Uh, and I, I guess given the point of a hundred episodes or something, it has to be at least that far in. Yeah. So actually this, you know, it, it's at least five, maybe six plus all the movies, plus the game, plus mm. the live action drama, plus the, you know, plus the live action film. Uh, somebody really loves Yoamushi pedal because they do keep making it. Well, they're paying for it. So 80, 80 volumes of yeah. the manga still yeah. going. What? Yeah. yeah Holy it's crazy. Cow. Yeah. I, I don't see why this is that engaging. I, I, I mean, I love sports shows, right? This one, not we, so much. I mean, we're fine. Perfectly we, fine. We are clearly not the audience it's intended for. So hey, I, I should be the audience for this, right? I should be. But nah, not 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 yeah. gonna not working. Um, all right, so that concludes the continuations and the continuations from the continuations of the season shows for at least a moment because, you know, we're going to get to next year and then we're going to just restart this process again. Um, so at least you guys get a reprieve for, for um, I don't know, a fraction of a month and a month plus. Um, so that being said, um, I think we're good for this week. So I'm ready to close up. Uh, is there anything I missed? Ah, nah. Okay. Well, then uh, we will close up. So, for all the things we've mentioned, please visit our website, www.talkgeneration.org/networks.tv. Uh, you want to hit us up by email? You can do it at talker.generation@gmail.com. You want to come in and hang out with us in Discord? Uh, leave feedback. Oglink.com/feedback/discord. Um, you want to become a supporter? ujlink.com slash support or patreon or patron um there are a few of you but um you know every every little bit helps um you know reduces expenses we've been doing this for a while and it, it basically majority of it comes out of my pocket but nonetheless um it's it's worth helping out okay so uh got it all right there's two sides of this white slip of paper and this one is longer than it should be um, ambition is the incentive that makes purpose great and achievement greater. Uh, say is. You know, as soon as you hit is, I knew this one was going to be a, 
a dud. Not right? a fortune. So, Not present a tense. fortune. Present tense, right? Fortunes about the future, right? There's an implication that this is something that's important to you. And if you take it into account, it will be good for you. But they don't say it. You got to say it if you want to be a fortune, not a fortune. Why don't why don't these fortunes ever tell you anything concrete? Like that bitch Miyaka in your class is trying to steal your pencil box. Um, though that's a prediction, right? Or that's a statement that isn't really necessarily a fortune either. Um, okay, well, uh, I, I would accept that as a fortune. Really? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, at this point, you know, my standards are not all that high, right? But I do have standards, and this this one of this week. Does not pass. Does not pass. Uh, okay. So that being said, uh, if you do want to pass in the real world, please stay home. Please stay safe. Please stay healthy. And if you got to go out, please wear a mask and uh, be considerate. Thank you, everyone, for listening this week. Um, we are well into the 900s. Uh, 909. That's a, that's a pretty high number. And uh, we're, we're, we're inching our way towards the holidays. So that being said, everyone have a good one and we'll we'll see you. Bye.